LeeTDickey.com. Do you have an event or occasion coming up that could use a special touch? Perhaps a wedding, a production, a show? Good! Then you're in luck. Haley Moores is who you're looking for. Haley is a makeup artist in the Toronto, Ontario area, specializing in bridal, glam, natural, and special effects. She's incredibly talented, professional, easy to work with, and has a personality that is second to none. To book Haley Moores today, follow her on Instagram at mad underscore malash, that's M-A-D underscore M-I-L-A-S-H, or email her at madmalash, again, that's M-A-D M-I-L-A-S-H at gmail.com. Book Haley Moores today. You'll be glad you did. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Do you find yourself reminiscing on what life was like when you were younger? Do your favorite songs, movies, and TV shows instantly take you back to a simpler time? Great! Then you're in the right place. Join me, Lee Dickey, on my new web series and podcast, Yo Nostalgia, where I cover everything you grew up with. From films and toys to fads and trends, Yo Nostalgia has it all. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are available. Follow along on social media at Yo Nostalgia Show to keep up on this time-traveling trip. Yo Nostalgia, breathing new life into your memories, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Hey, what's going on, everybody? Lee Dickey here. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Today, we're going to continue with the video game plus video game console and or accessories theme, and I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on the Super Nintendo classic, that rare sought-after treasure, Earthbound. But before we get into the main event, before we get into all that, I want to tell you where you can find the Beats and Speaks podcast. Of course, brand new episodes of the Beats and Speaks podcast are live. They go live every single Friday at midnight Eastern time on my official website, leetdickey.com, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever podcasts are available. We're also on YouTube under Lee Dickey TV. All that information is in the description down below. It is in the show notes. So go follow and subscribe there. If you'd like to be a guest on a future episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast, please do email me at leetdickey at gmail.com. Follow me on social media as well, at leetdickey. All the links and information is down in the description and if you would please do leave us reviews and rate us five stars on your favorite podcast app and player of choice because that helps us climb in the rankings which means we get to produce more episodes and you guys get more goodness from the mind of yours truly lee dickey and you get to keep enjoying this show as much as i enjoy producing and hosting this show and creating new content for you guys but now that all that Housekeeping is out of the way. Let's get into the main event, into the real salt and pepper. My opinions and my thoughts on the Super Nintendo classic, the sought-after treasure, Earthbound. All right, so yes, the Super Nintendo classic, the sought-after treasure, the rarity itself, Earthbound. I didn't have a copy. I did have a Super Nintendo. I think I got the Super Nintendo for... I want to say my sixth or seventh birthday was somewhere in there. It was I was in grade school. It was somewhere between grades one and three. So I might have been between the ages of six and eight. But I didn't have Earthbound. Now, I know it's a rare title. I'm not sure if it's gotten any less rare as the time has gone on. And it's, as far as I know, it's still a rare title. And my thoughts and opinions are pretty much based on watching... James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerds review and or like satire of the game in, I think it was season 12 of the Angry Video Game Nerd. So I did watch that this morning, the day that I'm recording this. Today is January 9th, so I watched it this morning. I thought it was a long review, but then again, it's it deserves the length that James gave it. And to be quite honest, there are parts in that game where it starts out very happy-go-lucky and then gets very, very dark. 
it goes from you're with a group of friends to you're you have to leave a dimension or something and then you have to sort of leave your actual bodies and then become robots to fight sort of a demon thing and then there's a, a point where you're fighting the background which this game is there's a whole bunch of twists and turns and after watching the review i think his review is somewhere between like 25 and 30 minutes but after watching the review and yes i know it's like a satire and the, the angry video game nerd character is basically making fun of bad video games if you will after watching all that and basically forming my own opinions and my thoughts on it, it just seemed like a really weird, twisted game. And it didn't sell very well, I guess, as people find out later, or they did find out later, and it's got its own community and its own forums and what have you, where I think the player's guide was one of the major reasons as to why it didn't sell very well. And... It was just really, it was an expensive game for the time. I'm not even sure when it came out for the Super Nintendo, but it just, I guess it was just a really expensive game for the time that it came out, and it just was either it didn't sell, or the copies that they did sell got returned, or something of that nature, and, you know, you can couple that with the fact that the player's guide made it really confusing, and made the game, and it's contents and the the package within and the accessories just made it really really expensive and therefore it just sat on store shelves and they couldn't move it but after watching some of the footage and listening and watching james's review i just i couldn't follow it i got confused i got lost like it almost and you know this might be sacrilege i don't know or i may be completely missing the point but it almost looked like an early version of the first sort of Pokemon games that came out in 95, 96, somewhere in there. Because legitimately, Ness from the Earthbound series looks a bit like Ash Ketchum, the main protagonist in Pokemon. I don't know, I may be completely missing it, but if you go back and you can see it as well, then thumbs up and thank you for me not being the only one that thinks that. But it just... Like, you're one guy, or you're one person, joined by a group of friends, and the game starts out very happy-go-lucky, and then gets very dark. You're fighting, you go from searching for your friends to, at points, having to revive them, and then you have to sort of leave your own bodies in one dimension or one realm, and then, you know, transport yourselves into, like, these robot bodies to fight the main antagonist in the game. There are points where you're fighting the background and it gets all twisted, sort of like the Twilight Zone. And then, like, there's a point in there where you're fighting, like, another portion of the background where it's, like, this fetus. And after, I just kind of, like, it's mesmerizing. After watching the review from James Rolfe, The Angry Video Game Nerd, it was mesmerizing, but it was super confusing. I couldn't figure it out. It, like, legitimately confused me. And even now, a few hours later, after watching the review, I'm still really, really confused. Because it's bright, it's vibrant, you get colors up the yin-yang, and happy-go-lucky, and then it just turns. You get... It, it gets very, very dark. Like, I would take it... If you're looking at something to compare it to or something that I'm thinking of off the top of my head, if you take a TV show like Dinosaurs, which was like this animatronic sitcom based on the prehistoric animals, the dinosaurs, it was a very happy-go-lucky, family-friendly show. And then the series finale, I think in season four, was it got really, really dark because something where Earl, the main character in that, or one of the main characters in that show, the paternal figure, the father in that show, basically set about the Ice Age uh, by buying into the advent of too much technology, and it just got really, really dark at the end. And it was just, you see the, the last shot is, or the last couple shots are this newscaster telling you that the frigid temperatures will continue. Thank you and goodbye. 
and then you just this camera pans like it zooms out and you just see Earl and his family like the baby the Charlene and the junior the other child and the wife Fran I think just sit in their house as it just continues to be surrounded by snow and it just Something that went from very happy-go-lucky to very dark in the series finale as, you know, Earl, the main protagonist, brought on the Ice Age. That's what I could basically compare Earthbound to just off the top of my head. It was just starts out very light, very family-friendly, and then just gets very dark and very weird. It's almost like... It, it's just really, really strange, you know? It, like I said, it was... Kind of like, you know, the Twilight Zone or like quantum, it just takes a quantum leap into, it goes completely left and you're fighting all sorts of things and you've got to like, I think there was a point where you're buying items like, and it's painstaking where you have to buy them one at a time and it just takes forever. You're taking a good like half an hour, say that if any of the friends you have along this journey, they happen to die, you have to go revive them because there are points where you actually need them and to you know, complete the game by yourself is next to impossible. So you need people and you need that group of friends within the game uh, to come with you. But if they die, you need to revive them and that could take up to like at least a half an hour plus 45 to like say an hour it, it could take a while and then again you've got to buy items painstakingly one at a time you've got to go around in circles basically and like i said you've got to sort of leave dimensions you're fighting the background you're fighting like images of a fetus and it just it is weird like i i don't even know how else to describe it because it, it's just very very strange I, I i've never played it myself I don't know whether or not like I'd be the kind of guy that would play Earthbound even all these years later. Like I'm the most casual gamer. I figure as you get older, you go from being really hardcore into something and then you just kind of casually sort of like it's there. It was a hobby. You know, you were really into it as a kid because you had the time. But as you become an adult, you just kind of, you know, life happens and things get become casual and they kind of fall by the wayside. But I, you know, again, getting back to how rare it was because of the player's guide and, and just, you know, James Rolfe shows you a bit of the player's guide and it looks super confusing. I mean, I've seen Nintendo Power and the video game magazines and, you know, programming cheat codes and stuff like that. But I, I mean, like, the, I'm sure they designed this game to basically take up as much time as humanly possible, but they also made it almost insanely difficult to the point where it's a little it it, it borders on it, it's borderline like unfair so i you know i don't know to those of you if you're listening to this have you played earthbound i mean what are your thoughts on this rp and the thing is like the community surrounding earthbound and the surrounding video games within its own series it has its own community, and it, it's hailed as one of the greatest RPGs of all time, which is a role-playing game for those of you that aren't really into video games and such. But it, it's hailed as one of the greatest RPGs of all time. But after watching that review that uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd or James Rolfe did, it just seems really, really strange. I, I know that it's probably not up my alley. It's not something that I would personally like to play it's probably not something that i would enjoy playing i it's just i enjoyed watching the review because it just it's quirky it's strange it's sort of twilight zone meets the x files sort of and it's just it's very very weird like supernatural esque but it goes from being very kid friendly to very dark and the fact that it didn't sell very well i don't know like and it's, it's highly sought after I don't know whether I would enjoy it for my... It's probably not for my taste, but the, I just... it. If you get a chance to play it, if you have a copy, good for you. What are your thoughts on Earthbound and any of its surrounding games? Let me know. Put it in the comments below and leave it in your review. 
but that's just those are just my thoughts on Earthbound and its rarity and the fact that like the Angry Video Game Nerd did a review on it for I think it was season 12 for that show and that character. But after watching that review, I was just kind of blown. I was blown away, surprised, but also very, very confused. I couldn't kind of I couldn't really wrap my head around how crazy Earthbound actually looked and how it actually played, because you're doing so many different things. And I think whoever developed Earthbound and is responsible for its license, I don't know, because it kind of looked like they were trying to serve too many masters. It was trying to be too many things to too many people. It was, I suppose they were trying to make it like the ultimate Super Nintendo game or the ultimate video game in general. And it just seemed to fall flat. Like it, it didn't really seem to work even though it's hailed as the best RPG of all time. I don't know. Maybe I could be completely missing the boat on that one. You guys tell me. Post it in the comments below and leave it in your review. It's just it's just trying to serve too many masters from what I gather. You're going from something very happy go lucky, almost like Super Mario esque to something incredibly dark, incredibly twisted by fighting demons and switching dimensions and then having to basically have out-of-body experiences and like rent a robot body for you and all of your friends and then it could it takes forever to buy anything in this game and it could take a while to revive any of your friends and your group if any of their characters die it just the fact that the game is incredibly sought after it's incredibly rare and it just it takes forever to complete and to those of you who have copies and that did have copies back in the day have copies now and that have been playing it i give you all the kudos in the world all the thumbs up that i can because it looks absolutely mind-bendingly mind-bogglingly insane it's one of those games where i'm i can't wrap my head around it and i'm 30 years old okay so here i am you know going on about a game that i've never played but even after watching footage, I, I'm confused and I, I'm, it kind of scares me how daunting that game seems to be. From the switching dimensions and the renting of the robot bodies and the reviving people that could take upwards of an entire day. And then the, having to buy items in this game that you have to buy painstakingly one at a time. And it just it's the Twilight Zone meets like the mcdonald's happy meals from back in the day it's like something very happy meets something very dark and they try to come together i'm not sure if it works well or if it works in the in the, the game's favor and the fact that it's it's popularity and it's rarity it, it's just, it's kind of like the batman villain two-face but it's just it's trying to do too much and it's trying to serve too many masters and there's just too many things in my opinion, the too many things that are just going on for this. I mean, no wonder it's super rare and no wonder it just seems super complicated. It, it's just trying to serve too many masters and be too many things. It, it can't, it doesn't come across as just an RPG. It doesn't come across as one of those, you know, standard role playing games. And, you know, if you don't want to be standard, that's fine. But it just doesn't come across as something that, for the time, you know, this was the Super Nintendo, so you're looking at, like, the early to mid-90s. It doesn't seem like that would be a game that you would want to market, say, on the Super Nintendo. It, it just didn't seem like the type of game that Nintendo itself would want to market. And the fact that it was released and... It, you know, it was just expensive, plus the accessories, and you needed sort of the player's guide, and I suppose, as the stories go, that is one of the reasons the game was so expensive, and couple everything within the game when you're fighting a giant fetus, and backgrounds, and switching dimensions, and robot bodies, like I keep saying, and you just, you're going from happy-go-lucky, something out of like a McDonald's commercial from the 80s, or whatever, to something incredibly twisted and dark, almost like Two-Face on steroids. I don't know that that kind of played into its favor. It, to me, it sort of seems like it would 
play into its downfall, into its detriment. But those are just my thoughts on Earthbound and from what I could gather from watching the Angry Video Game Nerd or James Rolfe's review of the super rare Super Nintendo treasure of Earthbound, or that is known as Earthbound. But what do you guys think of Earthbound? Do you own a copy? Have you played a copy? What is Earthbound really all it's cracked up to be? Let me know. Post it in the comments below. But please do comment, like, share, and subscribe. Find us on your favorite podcast app and player of choice, as well as my official website, leetdickey.com. If you want to be a guest on a future episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast, please do email me at leetdickey at gmail.com, and we will set something up and go from there so you and I can have a good old-fashioned conversation and a good time right here on the Beats and Speaks podcast. Find us on YouTube by searching for Lee Dickey TV. All the information is in the description below. But thank you again for listening. And we will see you all and talk to you all next Friday at midnight Eastern time for a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. I am your host, Lee Dickey, and I am signing off. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. dickie.com